Hey, what's up? Good morning, y'all. Yo, I'm hyped to go over this one with you guys. I know this is a really popular topic, and to be honest, once you figure this out, your sales calls are gonna be so smooth. And the best part about this is it doesn't matter what you're selling. What I'm gonna show you here by the end of this video is going to give you the skills and the tools necessary to execute any conversation and create that mutually beneficial outcome that you're looking for to where it makes it easy for the buyer to say yes, and it makes it better for you to make more money, less friction to close the deal. I'm just gonna go over the seven elements here, and our goal for this is, by, like I said, by the end of this video, for you to be able to craft your script with these things, these elements you need in your sales script, okay? Number one, you gotta have a strong intro. I actually did a video on everything we include in the intro on this channel in this group, so you can just go look for that video, the perfect intro in a sales script. This is gonna help you defuse a lot of objections you would normally not run into until the very end of the call as you get into the post collections phase, which we'll talk about here in a second but it's so important that you want to have a really strong intro. Next thing is you gotta have a discovery process. A discovery process is gonna help you uncover a handful of different elements you need in the call to build more value around what you're selling to take your price point from what it could normally be sold at if it was simply just client facing on the store like a shelf and increase the perceived value of that thing by showing them how quickly it can get done, how for sure it can be done and the risk uh, reversal, so basically risk that is not associated with saying yes to getting it done. These are all things they want to look at. Through the discovery process, you want to have a handful of things like understanding what is their pain, what are their fears, what are they hoping to gain out of this. We need stories and credibilities, which are basically like testimonials on a landing page. We need to explain different types of stories to increase our credibility and relate those stories to their situation so they know they're not alone, which is going to give them confidence. Okay. These are all things you want to find in the discovery process and I like to include a checklist around different things um, in the discovery process depending on your offer. So this way we can better structure a script for you to be able to ask the exact questions that are necessary to show them you know what you're talking about. Number three, it's going to be diagnosis. So here's a problem with people, sales reps. It's an epidemic. By the time they get all this info and discovery, which a lot of time this process is super rushed, okay? So you don't build the, the necessary perceived value to pitch the price point you wanna pitch. So usually this step is done pretty wrong, but the diagnosis is gonna be confirmation of the information that you uncovered in this process here, discovery. So in the diagnosis, we wanna make sure that we are only talking about the things that they mention in the discovery that they need help with, let them confirm that and if they bring up anything else, we write that down and we chunk down on that thing so we can get the details around that obstacle as well. Okay, it's very, very important that you, you do not talk about the things that they do not have interest in. Okay, we wanna help show them we can solve the things that they're currently having problems with and then post-sale, we also give them what they need along with what they want. Okay, it's very important to understand that as we get into the, the offer stage. Number four is offer. And it's super important to make sure you do diagnosis right before offer because in your offer, you're only talking about the deliverables that you have to help solve the diagnosis. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a story. This is when I train reps. For, let's say I'm you're going with my homies to the, uh, to the park to throw the Frisbee. And if they're like, hey, Rob, can you go grab the Frisbee out of the car? I'm gonna be like, sure, man, you want me, I also got a bowling ball, an oven mitt, a baseball bat, and a tennis racket, you want me to grab those too? They're gonna look at me weird and be like, no, Rob, we're here to throw the Frisbee, just go get the Frisbee. That's what people usually do wrong in their offer. But you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot if you sell them what they need before you sell them what they want and then give them what they need. So your offer is going to be the deliverables that you have at your company that is tailored to the diagnosis. The diagnosis is what you uncover in the discovery process. So this way, it seems like the entire call is customized to your avatar, the prospect you're speaking to, when the reality is you just had a better flow of conversation than anybody else, and you're taking the same script, you're just knowing what to say and what not to say. Then after this, five, you're gonna want a temp check. I'll actually put both of these on here at the same time. We want urgency. But the first thing you want to do is urgency. How soon are you looking to put something like this offer into play? 
and they're gonna give you the timeline. When they give you the timeline, you wanna be able to find the story within that timeline, figure out why it's that amount of time, how'd you come up with that number, that's what I usually say. And then from there, you can collapse the time to be able to get the deal today because now you have the ammunition as to why they believe they have to wait that long, okay? That's urgency. Next is gonna be temp check. Okay, cool, man, well on a scale of one to 10, one being like, why am I still on this call? And 10 being like, I need to figure out how to get started with this as soon as possible. Where do you fall on the scale? Temp check is gonna help you know where they're at. If they're an eight through a 10, they wanna buy. If they're nine through a 10, they will buy. Usually they just wanna see testimonials or they wanna know how it's gonna work for them, which is a clarity thing in the discovery process, right? That means that you did not tell enough stories and give enough clarity around how this actually functions will work for their specific scenario. If they're anything from a six to an eight, they just lack all clarity altogether. And if they're anything under a six, they don't trust you, okay? They don't like you, trust you. There's something off about you with them. They don't resonate with you. So that's number six, number seven, by the way, these are so important to get because if you don't know when they wanna get started, you're assuming, like my grandma says, right? You've heard me in other videos. Don't assume anything. You don't make an ass out of you and me. A-S-S-U-M-E. Don't be that person. Take my grandma's advice. And you wanna have a attempt check to be able to know what obstacles will come in front of you during the collections phase, okay? When you're going to collect money, the last thing you wanna do is overcome objections. A pro can defuse objections before they happen. A skilled rep, somebody that's quick with their words and a slick dude, which used to be me years ago, right? Because I was raw talent, is you can overcome objections. But the problem with hardcore overcoming objections is typically increasing the buyer's remorse and refund rate. So when you get really good and you achieve pro status, you can defuse all these things before they happen, which comes from learning how to strategically review your sales calls and customize your script accordingly over time. Number seven is going to be collection. Collections phase, man, this is like its own part of the sales call, all right? Because people deal with so many things. I don't have the money. I need to borrow the money. Where can I get the money? There's so many different ways to navigate the collections phase of the call. It's almost like its own tiny sales call within the sales call. So that's the next phase. And lastly, post call, which is right after you close the deal, you collect referrals. Now there's really easy ways to do that because a lot of people say, well, we haven't produced a service yet. Why would they want to give you referrals? Because man, the best time to make a sale is when you made a sale. And if they don't trust you now, when they're giving you money, dude, there's no other time they're gonna trust you more. You just made a transaction, create another transaction. This is something referred to as turning one into two into three. Okay, this is how you make a lot of money as a sales rep. When you learn how to do that, maximize resources. Build your sales script out with these eights. I know I said seven earlier, but it's actually eight, gave you a bonus one, which is referrals. A lot of people don't consider that to be a part of the sales call, but it is. This is how I did so many president's clubs. By the time I was 25, I did six of them. Top 1% in three different billion dollar companies, B2C, door to door, B2B. I'm telling you, if you learn how to do this, you're gonna create that similar type of outcome, make a lot of money. I'll put a link around this video if you wanna get involved in our Art of Sales Mastermind, where I personally, along with our team, we actually train sales reps to make more money and then find good opportunity for them so they could be in a better vehicle, sell a better offer, make even more money. Um, so that's something you wanna get involved in. There'll be a link around this. I'll put other resources around this video too. Hope this was helpful, y'all. Kick some ass. And again, leave your feedback below or like the video if it was helpful, and I'll see you on the next one.